Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back once again with my home theater series. Uh, this has been a series of videos that I started back in December when I bought a new 4K OLED TV that supports all of the new 4K HDR color features including HDR10 and Dolby Vision, uh, which a lot of these new 4K Blu-ray discs support and I wanted to find the best way uh, to watch these movies on that television upstairs. And today we're going to be taking a look at an endangered species, uh, the UDP203 from Oppo. This is a 4K UHD Blu-ray player uh, that has been discontinued but is still available. So they're going to be winding down production of these. They're going to continue to support and honor the warranties and make some firmware updates, but they will be discontinued uh, later on this year in 2018. And I was attracted to this for a couple of reasons. One is that the reviews are almost universally great on it, especially for its image quality. And it also supports two of the HDR color modes I wanted to use, the normal HDR10 along with Dolby Vision, which does add a uh, broader color depth to that television upstairs. And many movies are beginning to support that, including uh, the new Last Jedi film I bought recently. So I wanted to get the best I could uh, out of the films that I had. And I also wanted to find a way to be able to play back those films through this player over the network, because as many of you know, I take my Blu-ray movies and I rip them to a network attached storage device in the house here so I can play them back quickly and on demand in any room in the house. And I'm also able to take the movies outside of the house uh, using the Plex Media Server software. And in full disclosure, Plex is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. Now my current setup is that I have the uh, LG OLED TV upstairs, a C7. I bought that back in December. And I've been using an NVIDIA Shield TV with that uh, to play back those Blu-ray movies over the network. Uh, the Shield also can play back uh, 4K Blu-ray rips as well, but it doesn't support Dolby Vision. And another issue I have with the uh, Shield is that it doesn't uh, change color modes automatically. So when I go from an HDR movie like this one to a regular 1080p Blu-ray film, I have to go into the settings and manually switch it uh, into the other color mode. Otherwise, those traditional Blu-rays don't look right, and that's been a bit of an annoyance for me. So partly why I went after this player is that it supported all the color modes, as I mentioned, but I also is able to very easily switch between resolutions and color modes without a lot of hassle, and I really did need a good optical disc player. I was using the Xbox One S as my optical disc player, but it doesn't handle the HDR color modes all that great. It's a little bit off in its color. It also doesn't support Dolby Vision, and the player itself is really noisy with all the fans going on it. Uh, it really is kind of a, a, a distraction when you're listening to a movie with a quiet scene in there. So those are all the reasons why I wanted to look for a standalone player, and I figured may as well go with the best one. So we're going to look at uh, how this player performs, both in its ability to play back discs, but also its ability to play back movies over the network to see how well it does. And this is not going to be one of those super detailed, uh, you know, real master enthusiast reviews with calibration and pixel density and all that kind of stuff. I look at this from a consumer standpoint and how well and how easy it works. So if you are looking for a more in-depth review, there are plenty of them to get into the technical details. I'm looking at this strictly as a consumer to say, is this thing good enough or not uh, for your particular environment? And we'll dive into some technical details, but again, a lot of the really super techy stuff others do a lot better than me, and I will put a few links down below to some reviews of this so you can get the details you might be looking for. Now, in full disclosure, I paid for this with my own funds. I bought it directly from Oppo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has looked at this video before it was uploaded. So let's get into it. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is a high-end piece of equipment, and it looks like a high-end piece of equipment, and it is priced as such at $549. But there is a lot of flexibility with this device, and it does some things that allow you to uh, incrementally upgrade your home theater system, and it will uh, work with older stuff, but also newer stuff. And I'll explain some of the ways that it works with the older stuff as we uh, work through the review here. First item of note is the gigabit ethernet connector here. You can use this to stream uh, movies over your local network, for example. It supports DLNA, SMB, and NFS connections. So if you have a network attached storage device, it should be able to pull movies off of that. 
If you have a Plex server, it will be able to do that over DLNA, but it doesn't have a Plex app because there are no apps really to install on this thing. You use its internal apps and that is it. So no Netflix or Hulu or anything, but it will, again, work with movies you have stored on your local network. Now it's got two HDMI ports on board here, and this is really useful if you have an older home theater receiver. Uh, because if you've got a 1080p receiver, there's a good chance that it doesn't work with 4K, uh, not only because it doesn't support that resolution, but also because uh, those older receivers don't support the 4K copy protection, HDCP 2.2. And if you invested a lot in that receiver and it's still perfectly fine, you probably don't want to upgrade it. Uh, so what you can do with a player like this, and there are a few others that have this feature as well, is that you can run this main out to your television that does presumably support 2.2 if you've got a 4K set, and then you run this cable, which is the audio only output, to your receiver. So the receiver gets the audio, the TV gets the video, and you don't have to upgrade your receiver. That will save you some money. And I wish I had bought this player before I upgraded my receiver. Uh, one of the things about this series is that I've made a lot of mistakes that I hope others don't repeat, which is why I've been bringing these items up as we've been going through some of these things, because I have probably spent more than I should have on this project. Uh, the other thing that's cool about this device is that it has an HDMI input. Uh, this is not used for video capture, uh, but it is used so that you can have other 4K devices connect up and still work with your receiver. So for example, you could plug in uh, the NVIDIA Shield here, for example. Uh, the video and audio will run into this. You can run the audio back out to your receiver like we did for the internal stuff coming out of the player and then have the video go to the TV. So you can basically add two devices and have that work around from the copy protection issue, which I think is really cool to have on something like this. So in some ways you can kind of ease into this uh, 4K lifestyle here and still use some of your 1080p equipment. You have optical and audio out and coaxial here. Uh, this will support some of the uh, compressed formats like Dolby Digital and DTS, but not the lossless formats. But you do have the option to uh, push audio out through those if you wish. You've got two USB ports here for connecting external storage. I hooked up a, a solid state drive a little earlier and that worked fine. You have some controls here for home theater automation, an RS-232 port along with two trigger ports here. There's an IR blaster here in, on the back as well as on the front so you can have uh, things that are IR triggered work with it as well. And then this is cool because uh, you can actually run your surround sound out through analog on these ports here. This kind of works as a preamp. Uh, so it supports 7.1 channels. The uh, player here will decode the audio, convert it to analog, and uh, push it out through these uh, ports here. So if you have an older receiver again or something you know, a little fancier that you don't want to upgrade right away, uh, you can have that audio go out to each speaker uh, discreetly in analog format through these RCA ports here. And then your power connects up over there. So let's plug this thing in and see how it works. And I'll show you some examples of how it was working in my home theater system upstairs. So here we are on the home page of the Oppo Blu-ray player, and I really like its remote quite a bit. It is bulky, uh, but it is backlit, so when you lift it up off the table, it's got a little motion sensor built in, and it will light up all the buttons, and it'll turn off that light when it uh, is idle for a few minutes. I also like the fact that a couple of key features, namely resolution, audio, and HDR, are all tied to single buttons, so you can make adjustments to the film you're watching without having to dig through a bunch of menus to get there. So for example, if I want to change the resolution, I push the resolution button and I've got options for running a custom resolution of any one that I specify or go off the source directly, for example. You've just got the ability to very quickly make uh, little changes that you might want to do depending on the film that you're watching. Before we try to play back some media, though, I want to jump into the setup screen here and just show you a couple of things that uh, caught my eye. Uh, in the video output setup, you do have the ability to change some of the picture settings before it gets to your television. So you have the ability to basically adjust how the player is uh, decoding the video before it even gets out. Uh, so what you do is you can adjust brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation along with sharpness and noise reduction, and then you've got four different presets you can tie these settings to. So if you've got some movies that look better with certain settings, you can uh, just quickly switch modes there and get it to look the way you want it to look. And of course, you have probably similar settings on your television if you really want to add some complexity to it. Uh, but they also have some cool settings for HDR. And this display that I have hooked up right now is 4K, but doesn't support HDR. In fact, a lot of early 4K displays don't. 
Uh, this gives you the ability to work with those older displays so you can get some 4K resolution without necessarily upgrading your uh, TV right away. And they have some things that you can adjust here for how it does an HDR to a standard color mode here. So if I jump into the screen here, we've got it set to right now mode one, uh, which is going to preserve the most highlight details in the film. Uh, mode two here will preserve a balance between highlight and shadow. Uh, mode three will give you a good balance between midtone and highlight. And mode four will give you the most shadow details. And this would be something I think you'll probably adjust on a per movie basis. Obviously, it's not ideal to watch a uh, HDR movie on a non-HDR display, but you can, and you can try to tweak it so that it looks uh, better than it might if you didn't have any ability to make this conversion at all. So nice to see that feature built into this. Again, a little backwards compatibility, if you will. And there's a couple of settings in the audio screen here that I found of interest. The first is that uh, you can actually mix in secondary audio sources here with the secondary audio function. I think what this will do, at least, at least from reading the manual, is that it will allow you to take, for example, a director's commentary and have it run alongside the primary audio. I think it reduces the volume of the primary audio, uh, but if you wanted to get the director's commentary and the uh, actual film running at the same time, at least the film audio, uh, you can do that with this secondary audio function, but the default is to have that off, of course. Uh, the other thing that I had to do here was the AV sync, uh, which adds a bit of a delay to the audio going out to the receiver or can actually deliver the audio ahead of the video, perhaps, depending on what's going on, because if you're noticing audio going out of sync, you'll need to make that adjustment. Interestingly enough, I've never really had to make that audio adjustment before on my equipment upstairs, but uh, this time I did. My audio was just slightly out of sync and I was able to correct that uh, using this AV sync option and just kind of uh, playing around with it until I got it to where it was working properly. So let's pop a movie into this thing and see how it works. I've got Arrival that I had upstairs, so let's uh, pop this in real quick. We'll open up the uh, disc tray here and pop the disc in. Uh, now this, of course, will work like any Blu-ray player will. It will load the disc up and start playing with it. And of course, uh, we have to deal with all the stuff that happens before the movie actually starts. So I'm gonna go dig through all those menus here and uh, get the movie started and show you what some of your options are while you're playing back a film. All right, so it took about 45 seconds to get this movie to actually start playing, but it now is playing. And remember, we don't have an HDR uh, display here, so I can make some adjustments here with that HDR setting I showed before uh, to try to get the best mix here of uh, modes to get the image looking the way I want it to. So this might be something you'll have to pop into and play with quite a bit if you are on a non-HDR display. Now if I was hooked up to a regular HDR display, this would of course uh, set the proper color mode for that particular television. Now there's also a really high-end scaler built into the Oppo player which will make lower resolution movies look better on your 4K display, and you get to that feature here by hitting the resolution button and then selecting the resolution that you want to output to. So right now I have this set to source direct, and what this is doing is giving my monitor here uh, the native resolution and frame rate of the disc that is currently playing back, which is of course a 4K Blu-ray file. Uh, so right now we're getting a 4K 24 frames per second film being outputted at that resolution to the display. But let's say you've got a 1080p Blu-ray, for example. Uh, you can have the player up convert to 4K uh, so you can get a better quality image out of a lower resolution movie. You can even do that with an old uh, DVD, for example, if you want to do that. And you have the option here to set a custom resolution. I have my custom setting at uh, 4K at 24p right now, but you can change it to something else if you want. Uh, or you can have the player choose the best option for your display, which I believe will uh, find the best mix of frame rate and resolution to get you to where you want to be. And if you want to adjust that custom setting so it sets itself to a different custom output uh, for that menu option, you can just dig into the setup menu again and then go here and set your custom resolution to what you want. And one of the things that I really like about this player is how quiet it is. I'm not hearing that disc spinning, uh, nor am I hearing any fans or anything. It's a completely fanless playback device. And as such, when you're in a quiet scene in a movie, you're not going to hear the player going, which was the issue that I had with the Xbox One. 
But the one thing that I'm really disappointed about with this device is that it is not doing a very good job of network playback, which was partly why I purchased it. Now, in fairness, I don't think I am a target market for any Blu-ray manufacturer because when they are making a Blu-ray player, uh, they're assuming people are going to play movies back on discs and not using uh, super large MKV files that they're streaming over the network. Nonetheless, this does do it, but it doesn't do it very well. So let me show you what happens here. So I just went into our network settings here. You can see that it automatically found all the devices on my network that it might be able to play back something from. I'm going to connect over DLNA to my uh, WD MyCloud PR2100 device that I use as my media server here in the house. I'm just going to navigate uh, down to my Ultra HD folder here and uh, pop into that. And what I'm going to do is just select uh, The Last Jedi here and start playing back that MKV rip. Now, this is a 4K UHD film, and look how long it takes for it to start playing back. I mean, this literally will sit here uh, for probably close to a minute before things start playing. And uh, that isn't the only problem with it, but it was the first problem that I encountered. Uh, the other issues that I've run into with it is that it locks up frequently. Uh, so I wasn't getting a very good consistent uh, stream from the network attached storage device to the player. And this player was sitting on the same exact switch that my NVIDIA Shield sits on, which plays back those 4K movies flawlessly, uh, both through Kodi and through Plex at full resolution with all the audio going and HDR happening too. Uh, it was working perfectly there, and those movies started instantly on the shield, uh, not so much here. So although this is switching resolution properly and getting the color mode set uh, properly, for example, if I'm playing back a 1080p uh, MKV file, it will switch the color space over to the Blu-ray color space, which the shield doesn't do. But uh, we're sitting here still uh, waiting for that movie to start up. And uh, what I found again with this is that we're getting lockups occasionally too over the network playback. So for me, this was kind of a deal breaker because I did buy this to have a good Blu-ray player, but I also wanted the network playback because the inability of the NVIDIA Shield to switch back and forth between its color modes was getting a bit annoying, and I wanted to get something maybe that could do all of my movie playback perfectly in a single device, but uh, here you go. You've got movies locking up like it's doing here. I can uh, skip ahead to the next chapter and get it to start playing again, but uh, this plays fine on my other devices. It just isn't playing fine here, and uh, I think for 550 bucks, it could do a better job of 4K MKV files. Uh, the 1080p Blu-ray files do seem to work okay. Those also take a while to stream up here, so uh, we'll back out of the menu here and go over to one of my other Star Wars films. We'll look at Return of the Jedi. And this will also take a little bit of time here as it's thinking about what it's doing. I'm guessing it's caching up some stuff in the background, and then it will start playing back. So that's good. It gets the color mode shifted properly, but uh, generally you are sitting on these little <laughs> twirling things as it uh, gets itself queued up, whereas you'll see an immediate playback uh, on the NVIDIA Shield. So there are some benefits to this player, especially for playing back discs. It does have uh, Dolby Vision support in addition to regular HDR10 support. It is whisper quiet, uh, so it does everything I think someone would want out of a Blu-ray disc player, but uh, for people like me that are streaming rips over the network, uh, it's not doing as well. You do get, though, a lot of cool information about your disc as it's playing back, so you can see variabilities in the uh, bit rate when certain things are on screen here, so you can see how it's dropping very low with the, this black on screen, and then as the movie starts up, you get a little bit more information. And they've got some other stuff here where if you hold down the info button you can get a lot of data as to what uh, is currently playing back on your film here so you get all the details here about the resolution the native frame rate uh, the color depth mode that it's in the video codec used and then it gives you an idea as to what its output is uh, so right now it's up converting with its scaler this 1080p movie to uh, 4K. So I knew going into this that this was more of a player than I needed, but I like the fact that I could get the best decoder in the industry that can play my discs and play my MKV rips without issue. Unfortunately, it just doesn't do a very good job of those 4K MKV files over the network, and because it is an endangered species, I don't anticipate them improving that function given that it's not representing a bulk of what their customers are looking for. So for me, I think I'm going to be parting with this player as good as it is, and looking at something a little less expensive that I'm going to use primarily as a disc player, and I'll continue to suffer along with my NVIDIA Shield and the fact that it's not color switching properly. Maybe it will uh, do so with a firmware update coming soon. So I think that's where I'm going to go. So my next purchase is going to be the uh, Sony UBP-X700. 
uh, which costs about half of what this one does. It has a much more Spartan uh, layout in the back of it, but I am buying that specifically for disc playing because it does support Dolby Vision or will very soon, along with HDR10 and all the other stuff that uh, I'm looking for in an optical disc player. So that's probably the next purchase, uh, and I will do an update video when that one comes in. I'll let you know what I think of that player when it does arrive. And I don't want to disparage this player because Jabba the Hutt will never look better on your TV than it will with this, but uh, for me, I just don't feel like it is uh, worth it for me to spend this much money on something that doesn't do everything I want. So until next time on our 4K series, this is Lon Seidman, and thank you for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.